In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, God is one. Amen. Begin by reading Romans chapter 2, verses 10 to 16, and then Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 23. We're thinking round here about all the saints and martyrs of Great Britain and Ireland. There's many, many of them. There are tens of thousands of them. It's said that even on one island there were 10,000 saints, though that might be a small exaggeration. Now, in Romans, St. Paul talks about having the requirements of the law written on our hearts. And that's really an important idea. Because we have to remember when we're reading this that Jesus Christ himself is the absolute fulfillment of the law and the prophets. In fact, we could say that he is the law and the prophets. We follow Christ and we are in Christ and Christ in us. And if we do that in a perfect way, you would not be able to slide the slightest tissue between yourself and our Lord. Of course, by the Holy Spirit, the requirements of the law are written in our hearts. And that's why we think about the saints at the moment, because these are people, men and women of all ages, all types, all backgrounds and so on, <clears throat> who have the law written by the Holy Spirit on their hearts, the requirements of the law written upon their hearts mediated by the holy sacraments of the church. Now what does that law, Christ himself, actually require from us? Well we know when we think about the commandments of our Lord. I'll just take one or two. I'll take three. The first one is love one another that all people shall know that you are my disciples. That is a command that has never been rescinded. Love one another, love the Christian brotherhood, love the Christian saints, love the Christian people, that all people may know that you are my disciples. What a way <clears throat> to proclaim the gospel simply by loving each other. Very hard work, of course because sometimes we have to love the unlovely. And the Lord said, he doesn't give us a, a get out clause here. He says also, love your enemies, another love. This time, not of your Christian brothers and sisters, but of your enemies. And then he said, alongside that, pray for your persecutors. That's how much you should love them. You love them, so you pray for them. He didn't ask you to pray for your friends and relations, only for those people who are your enemies and who persecute you. And then a third commandment, forgive. Forgive everybody. Forgive, he said, 70 times 7. So keep on forgiving. Don't make forgiveness conditional on anything at all. Or say, you know, I've forgiven you. 70 times, 7 times, and now that is enough. 490 times I've done it, and I'm now sick of doing that. You might say, oh, Father, <laughs> I'm not a saint. I can't love everybody. I can't love my enemies. I can't pray for those people who are harming me. And forgive and forgive and forgive and forgive. I'm not a saint. And the Gospel says to you, why not? Did not Jesus call you too? Should you not also drop the nets of your old life? Shouldn't you drop the nets that are keeping you worldly so you can run along after him? Should you not open up your heart to the gospel of the kingdom? Should you not have your dis-ease with life? 
and your infirmities healed so you become pure of heart and see God. Even the smallest initial step, having dropped those nets, having decided to love one another, having decided to love your enemies, having decided to pray for your persecutors, having decided to forgive 70 times 7, will mean that you will make a beginning of being a fisher of men, bringing them into God's kingdom, allowing them also to have the requirements of the law written upon their hearts, just like the huge panoply of saints who surround us with their prayers as we pray. Your prayers for me and mine for you. God bless you. Amen.